This is most definitely the easiest way for you to get started creating your own games using Cave. So I will explain everything here in this video. And the reason why I'm making this video in particular, I will show everything in a moment, is because this weekend the Ludon Dairy 57 will happen. And if you know me, you, you know that I really recommend everyone that wants to learn game development or even if you are a good and experienced game development, uh, developer if you want to improve your skill a game jam is a perfect place so this is not sponsored or anything like that but i really like Lodonary. i will be participating using cave and i want you to participate as well especially if you have cave um, and if you don't have i want you to join right now because the engine is with a great launch discount because of the version 1.2 so get the engine right now and let's join the jam so we have three days to create the the, the game as soon as the jam starts, it starts in about four hours, the moment I'm recording this video. So a theme will be announced and you'll be able to create your game. You can use any software you want. You can make a game alone or in a team. Three days, that's it. Uh, if you want, go ahead and create an account. I'll leave the link here in, um, in the description. And it will require an invitation code. And the code that you need is time for LD57. So I'll put this, but you can actually just type here, type time for LD57, and then you get the invitation code. You can create the account and make your game. So it's very good. So let's go back to Cave and why I'm saying that this is literally the easiest way to create your game right now. It's because um, when you are creating a game, I notice something uh, because i've been creating games for so many time i've been teaching people how to make games there's a lot of things that every single game no matter how different the game is um we we'll, like you will need to create the, the this kind of stuff like regardless how the game is for example uh, maybe you're talking about a first person or her game versus a racing game so they are completely different games but both games will probably have something like a pause menu because everywhere in the game you want to pause the game and you, then you want to continue or if you want you can restart the level you can go back to the main menu which is another menu that you may want to have in your project as well uh, with credits for you with like a play game or a quit game option and if you play the game you want to go straight to the game um, inside the game you want to have maybe a health bar like i have on the top left uh, of the screen and then you expect to have like a way to lower and increase the health of the player and if the health reaches zero well the game may have a game over screen so this is like pretty common stuff that every single game have and i noticed that when you're making a game especially for a game jam this is not like mandatory uh, for the game itself but it makes a huge difference it's like this small detail that well this is very important to have um, and you will waste a lot of time creating this from scratch every time you make a game so it's better to have a template it's better to have a starter project with everything done for you and not only that you can see below in the bottom left corner i do have some tutorials here um, that of course you can change and if i go here i can change scenes so i have this level complete that goes to level next level or lets you play again uh, the scene and to finish this very fast explanation on this um i do have if we're creating like a third person character well then you you're lucky because we do have like this startup third person um controller the character can walk he can run and he can jump very simple and um, I do have the steps here because inverse kinematics is in place and you can see that the feet is aligned with the ground just fine. And you can you see the horizon? It's a huge terrain. Uh, actually, this is not huge. I think it's like two by two kilometers. Um, so, well, it is huge depending on how we look at it, but um, we, you can go much crazier in Cave 1.2. But the ground, like the, the feet of the character is actually aligning aligning with the ground. I'm not sure if I will reach a slope because again, it's a long distance and I don't want you guys to wait a lot, but I think you, ha you have to wait, take my word on it. Yeah, here you go. The feet is aligning. Very nice. Anyways, so we do have everything here and ready for you. And I will show you very quickly how this looks like because it's 
super good and again this is available for you that have cave and there is a repository and i'll explain the details in, in our discord but i'm also going to link the stuff in the description so you can clone and oh i want to start a new game i want to participate in ludinary well you can clone this and make the game right here and you will find the scene the game like the project very simple and easy for you to start customizing and you can look at this um for example there's two scenes here the main menu of course and the gameplay scene creating a new scene by the way is very easy i'll talk about that in a moment in a moment but the first thing that you look at this and we'll probably think is well this main menu looks ugly man it doesn't look good well this is actually intended to be like that because i want you to modify it uh, the way you want so i don't want to make like a fancy menu that everyone will like because then everyone using this template will have eventually the same menu and this is not good so i want you to modify the menu so for starters the first thing that you're probably gonna have to do is change the name of the game uh this is not a cave tutorial but you can f i'm actually navigating here for you to understand where the things are so we can have uh, you have this main use folders and then you have the main menu and then you have the text title here that you can expand and change the name of the game so something else maybe you want to have an image here instead of the um, of like a text so you can import an image of course I don't have an image here so this is my uh, say I don't know this is the logo of my game the, the sky background or stuff like that you can adjust the, the placement of, of everything um, as you can expect in cave you can do wherever you want uh, and then the last the next thing that you probably want to do is to go to the uh, credits menu and of course edit the credits here uh, I made this game if I can type so you can edit the credits and it's very important to do this, of course, because otherwise people are not going to be able to know that it's your game. Then you go ahead and disable here. Um, you can click here and disable the, the game UI or just press 7. And then you go ahead and create a badass menu background for your menu. Of course, you create your character, you put it here and do all sorts of crazy stuff. So this is very good for you. And then you eventually have a good looking menu. And then you want to customize the menus like the, the buttons. Well, in Cave, it's actually super easy to do this. I hate the game engine that forces you to go one button one by time and customize it. I mean, you if you want, you can do this in Cave. I'm not stopping you from, I don't know, doing crazy stuff with, with a single button. But um, if you want, let's actually do something crazy here. Just because I want to showcase something in Cave. So I have different buttons here. Uh, and I want to change them now. Well, in Cave, you can actually create something that we call UI style. Which is a style file that have um a default settings for a button for example or, or any ui element in general you can have multiple ui styles you can you can choose to use them or not but what is cool about that is that this scene here this this project is already set up for them um, and if you click in assets interface you will find the buttons ui style as you can see here uh, and every button in this project is using this style so if i click here i can change for example i want to make this button black well, here you go, I can have it. Uh, I want to make it semi-transparent and blur the background. Here you go, I can do this. Now I have blur background, blur, black, semi-transparent. And the cool part here, uh, maybe I don't like when I hover, it's white. I want it to be red for some reason. So here you go, it is red. And when I click, oh, green is good enough. Uh, maybe I don't like the the sound when I hover the, the, the button. I can click here to edit when hover uh mouse in callback and put a different sound here and this will be applied to every single button that uses this uh this style and in this case it's every button that i've created here for you guys so we can very easily customize it the stuff um and here as you can see it works just fine oh but wait let me just finish something i do have here um, a, um an image if i want once i don't I, I don't have to have an image, but um, what is cool about this image is that it does have this technology called nine slicing. So it will slice the image into nine pieces and it will preserve the edges here. So even if I stretch the buttons as I did this on purpose, you can see that the edges are correct. Uh, and it will be very weird if I put like a normal map image, but I can do. There's nothing to prevent me. Um, Anyway, so this is, oh, look at this. It looks good. If I don't blur the background, look at this. Whoa, looks good. 
course, I need to change the other buttons as well. So now it will look better. So, but the, the problem is that this color is black, so uh, the tint here will not going to affect it, so it's always black anyways. But you get the idea, you can change and do whatever you want. And of course, if I play the game uh, and pause the game, you can see that the changes are applied to every single button, which is kind of good. Uh, and if I run out of health, you can see the buttons here again. So very easy to customize and it is meant for you to customize. Um, the same thing goes for the, the, the player itself. So if I click content and double click the gameplay, you can do whatever you want. You can maybe this, uh, remove this terrain or you can edit the, the, the terrain and maybe add like some cliff here. I don't know, up to you. Uh, do whatever you want. It's meant for you to do this, right? Um, and not only that, but the player here, so if I click here, the player, I have the player entity, uh, the player entity template, sorry, if I double click it, I can see everything about the player. So here is where I will change the player to another mesh. So I can change the mesh here and make the player be something weird as we can see right now. Oh my God, <laughs> it's a triangle. I can change the color, the material and all that, the animations of the player. I can change the logic here in the player uh, script. So it's a hundred uh, lines of code. Most of this is the inverse kinematics because it's done for you here. Very nice, very simple, but the rest, oh, we, we do have comments here. I remember you, hey, this is where we play the animation. So make sure that you change animations. Everything here is easy for you to replace. And of course, we have the um, this small tutorial that you probably want to remove the, the sheeting here to lose and gain health. Um, it's very important. It is here at HUD tutorial so you can go ahead and change the text here you can change the life bar maybe i want the life bar to be i don't know in the right corner so let's go ahead and do this here you go now the life bar is here maybe i want the life bar this thing itself to be um instead of going down to the left i want to go down to the right so, so i can go ahead and do this probably gonna be this easy and i want to make it this green here you go so it will work maybe i don't want this health indicator or i want something else super health or strength because you're making a different game something else i don't know you can rename it here um and the same thing goes also for the pause system the pause the pause menu is here so you can change it the game over menu you can change this terrible red background that is placeholder and also the same for the level complete. So you can do whatever you want and the game will be here and you'll be able to look at that. The health is going up and down just fine, you know? So you can change this and maybe you wanna change, like wanna create a different level because of course you may want to do this. It's very simple. You just right click, new scene. So you have a new scene, completely empty, nothing going on. You can go to player, drag and drop the player, and that's it. You have F5 to play, working, level, I can die, play again, I can pause the, the, the game, can restart, continue, it, it is working just fine. Maybe you want to change levels. So let's go back to the main menu, uh, to the gameplay um, from this scene here. So with the scene selected, I can select this portal here and by the way yes i can edit the portal i can do whatever i want i can toggle the physics and change the colliders and all that but if i drag and drop the portal here to this scene and if i go to the properties of this portal it have like a scene that you to go to you can put gameplay good now if i play the game and climb the portal level complete next level and it is the gameplay as we can see uh, this portal here we can edit it if you want or you can have like multiple portals maybe i have like two here this goes to the main menu this one goes to the scene that we just created and it is called scene and i know this because it is called scene anyways so if i go ahead to the scene here it will go to the newly created scene so it goes on and on and on and I can keep creating my game like that. And of course, uh, this game 
can have this other scene here that we just created. It can have different mood, different atmosphere, skylight, time of day and all that. So we can go crazy with this, which is very, very nice. Let's try to do some crazy purple stuff. I don't know. I'm not even sure what I'm doing at this point. <laughs> I'm just randomly adding a purple world to my game. Yeah, so this is a purple world. Great. Let's leave the purple world. Now let's go back. Here we go. So you get the idea here and this is very easy for you to create your game. And again, it is used in Git. So you can just clone the repository or, or you can download it as a zip. Uh, put the name of your game and get started. So for this Ludinary, well, we don't have to worry about menus, losing your winning conditions because it's here and it's a single code. Very easy. You can open this in VS Code. Uh, it is actually, if you know, um, it is here already. So we can edit the scripts very easily and that's it. So this is it for this video, folks. Let me know in the comments what you think. And remember, Ludinary is this weekend and Cave Engine is on a great launch uh, sale, so make sure you get it before it's too late. So, I see you in this game, Jen. Thanks for watching. Bye.